view, is outside the Palace of Westminster. They still can't put him inside. I think we should put him inside, mm. and inside the Westminster Abbey too. And Oscar Wilde. Yeah. <laughs> How are we, we, we can't cringe with these people. No, they, we, they, no. they mean to kill us. We won't say the same for them, but we will not cringe about that. You but will there's not a mixture. cringe, but you will be... Uh, I, yeah, let me just yeah, take up yeah. a point with, uh, about not cringing. Stephen, you, your comedy, your friends, the, the nature of comedy, the nature of wit... Uh, in, in language, all languages, but particularly, you know, we know it, we're familiar with English jokes and humour, uh, uh, involves the use one. of this word, offence, mm. uh, uh, giving offence. Comedy is to give offence. You will therefore offend people who will have on their side a law enacted by this government which will allow there to be prosecutions brought for comedy, for Salman Rushdie would certainly be prosecuted. For it? irony, he'd be prosecuted for irony. Mm. And, and, In England. And how is this to be stemmed? Uh, we can object, we can no, no, be passionately object. against Repudiate. No tolerance for that. No Simply refuse to obey the law. Yes, no, one couldn't possibly obey you the law. Can't the first, you cannot offend. grant the first premise of it either. We only have a democracy. Oh, oh, no, 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 stop. No, 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 I, I sort of half sympathise with you. <laughs> oh, no, my dear fellow, goodness, now you put me on the spot. I have no, so no, little no, to no. say about this. Um, I have, um, I, I think we have to separate out all kinds of things. Yes, we all, I'm sure, have the same horrified feeling about what newspapers like to call mad mullahs or the fanatical end uh, of, of any religion, whether it's the, uh, the fundamentalists in America and other parts of uh, Christendom, or whether it's the, um, the absolute intolerance and indeed the hatred and desire to see people like me killed of, of, the, uh, of, of the Muslim uh, population. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's horrifying to think there is that much hatred out there uh, for me and for things I believe in, and it makes me very cross, naturally, um, and I will not bear the idea that I can't discuss it openly and freely, and I won't bear the idea that um, I can't uh, point out what seem to me dire and absurd inconsistencies in biblical texts, which may or may, or may not say that uh, homosexuality is a bad idea, but it's, they spend a great deal more time talking about how bad shellfish is to eat, and uh, I don't know many fundamental Christians who eat kosher, which is a rather bizarre thing, because that's much more strictly set down, nor indeed do they ban menstruating women from their religious institutions, which is, again, quite simply put down. So, I mean, just the simple, obvious things of pointing out the inconsistency of a load of books that were slung together over, over history and are now called the Holy Bible. Uh, all those things, of course, one must have the right to do. But when it comes to inciting hatred, I personally don't believe inciting hatred's a good idea. Uh, I don't think inciting racial hatred is a very good idea, and I'm rather pleased we have a law against inciting ra racial hatred. Um, you know, we come up with all kinds of uh, cliches like, you know, the Holocaust began not, not with the first hut built at Auschwitz, but with the first stone thrown on Kristallnacht, or, or however one likes to put it. Of course, it's rather banal because um, you can't stop people throwing a stone. But we are alert to the fact that, that the incitement of hatred is not good. And I think sometimes on our side of the debate, which is to say the secular side, we can... We can rather overread the mass of what religion is and alienate it all the further and drive a wedge between a secular world, a world of reasoning, educated people like ourselves who can uh, happily quote all kinds of uh, uh, philosophy and are familiar simply with the mechanics of logic, which of course are uh, utterly alien to the vast quantity, it seems, of religious people and who indeed have no respect for logic, which to us is tiresome in the extreme because it means there's no basis for argument. But if we accept that there are people who fall on their knees in churches and who don't wish uh, to be mocked with whips and scourges for doing so, well, that's fine. And I would always hope to be tasteful enough never wantonly to offend anyone. However, uh, simply to, to say there is a religious world, a secular world, and the two are enemies is a hopeless thing, it seems to me. It seems to me the greatness of our reason, if it is great, is that it can accommodate and teach and enlighten. The enlightenment should not be considered to be over. It's a, it's a project that will never end. After all, it's a word that religious people use too, particularly Buddhists. That is to say the enlightenment, the shedding of reason, the understanding of 
the human heart, the understanding of the universe, the understanding of all the things that surround us, is, is a mission and a project we each in our lifetimes embark upon and we'll never finish, and the next generation will too. But if we start to add to the diggings of the trench and putting up of the barbed wire between us and those who are religious, simply by mocking them and saying, well, of course, it's all nonsense, your religion, and anyway, you're all dangerous because behind you are the big guns who want to destroy us and our buildings and, our, uh, and impose a, a, a medieval uh, ecclesiasticism upon us, then I think we're doing a very dangerous and foolish thing and we're not using the very tools that we think we are, make us better, i.e. our reason uh, and our tolerance uh, and our understanding of others, which is not to support a blasphemous law, but to say that the, the, the blood and fire and, and brimstone that Christopher preaches is in danger of having a religious fervor to it, as it were, which, which is, to my ear, sensitive and, and queenie as it may be, uh, a little too like the, the, the battle cries of the enemy. There it's is a, a paradox here. Yeah. Masochistic, okay, well, masochistic <laughs> applause for someone who can't decide whether he's waving a, or drowning in his own thoughts. There is a beautifully paradox put, here between... Beautifully put. We, we, we applaud, as you rightly do, that, that expression of the inheritance of the Enlightenment, which is characterised by tolerance. We wish to be tolerant. We wish to expend to others the rights we claim for ourselves to the expression of ideas. When they express ideas which damage that tolerance... How do we persist in our tolerance of that critique? Well, first, I, th just, I want to make a tiny correction um, to the way things are going about incitemental race hatred, incitemental religious hatred, or hatred of religion, or one religion. I think a lot of people think um, if you attack Islam, you must be attacking brown or black people. That's not true. Islam doesn't claim it's true. No. Islam indeed claims to be universal. So the, mm. the shady stuff done by Galloway and others that it's racism to attack Islam must be dispensed with on its face. Um, the second point I want to make, I hope I don't offend anyone, by the way. I'd rather hear from Stephen. No, no, they no, did no. buy a ticket with the risk <laughs> of uh, having both. But I'll try and condense, naturally. Um, is, would, be, would, would simply be this. I mean, I... I think that one must hear from people who dislike others. Um, it's essential to me that Ian Paisley is a member of Parliament, and of the European mm -hmm. Parliament, and that he says that Catholicism is a work of the devil. And so it's absolutely essential. And it's essential to hear what Catholics really think about Protestants and Jews and others, which, and, and I know what that is, though they often try to mask it, especially in England. I know what they think about it. I know what they think about you. They, they, they say they